Hi guys and girls, welcome to another clip by Andronto. This time, something quite different. So what you're looking at now is ambush predators as a whole, but particularly the Gaboon. Now, there's going to be a comparison between ambush hunters and active hunters. So what we're going to do with that is that we're going to just show the differences in technique and also because this clip is mainly about design and how a snake's technique is influenced by its design or its design is influenced by its technique it's pretty much like which came first chicken or the egg so enjoy your trip with us have a good look at this i'm sure you guys are going to find this quite interesting being an ambush predator it's got its pros and cons. It means that you can now expend the least amount of energy to get a maximum reward. Now, unfortunately, that also puts you in danger. Because if you're an ambush predator, you better be hidden well, lest your food sees you. But then there are other animals that could just incidentally wander past that have absolutely no intention of predating on you and they could stand on you simply because they can't see you. So therefore, large snakes like the gaboons, both East and West African gaboon adders, as well as a close cousin, Bitus nasicornis, have developed this advert on their back. And that advert is that white rectangular pattern that you can see in this clip here. If you follow the action of the camera, you will notice that when you're looking at a plan view, the shape of the snake is very evident by that lighter interspace, darker interspace, lighter interspace, darker interspace. And just for interest sake, it also mimics this banded snouted cobra, which got a similar type of pattern just in a different order so you can see that make a comparison and just have a look then notice how as the camera gets lowered the uh, pattern disappears and you're now getting your prey items perspective which is no longer a plan view but a side elevation and now that pattern is completely missing and um, some sucker jumps out the dark, sticks a McDonald's sticker on you and you've just become the next right, guys, away. it's not just pattern similarities. There's warning behavioral similarities. So we see that the gaboons tend to lift their heads up whenever they approach by an animal that could potentially injure them. Right, so here we have an East African gaboon and uh, you can see the lighter darker interspaces pretty much like that snouted cobra that we looked at you can see that it's already threatened by my presence here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to agitate it a little bit it's not something that I like to do but I'm going to just touch it and see how the head lifts up very cobra like it's fairly obvious, the head lift very cobra-like and a loud hiss and I wonder is this just too coincidental or is this a genuine resemblance? My goodness, what a question and we're just putting a little copy of, of cobra behavior that will reinforce what we're saying here it may be coincidental mm, you think about it and you decide now any of these animals need to have a certain kill structure and uh, what we're looking at here is that the the active hunters are normally snakes with shorter fangs, very potent venom, capable of killing very rapidly, 
and when we look at the ambush predators, we find that they are armed with the most alarming dentistry. Their dentistry is large, and uh, although the venom is pretty potent, it's not quite that of your uh, active hunter. And uh, one wonders if the fang design isn't designed as a bit of overkill, or is it purposely made so that the fang will inflict maximum trauma on entering the torso of the prey item? It just seems, if I had to make a comparison, it would be a bit like somebody taking one of my crutches, putting a sharp end on it, and sticking it through my torso. In comparison to the fang on a gaboon and the torso of a rat, you can see the comparison there. And that is pretty traumatic. And um, quite often, I'm sure, these prey items rather die from physical trauma than the venom. The venom is overkill and it's designed to start the digestive process. That's what it's designed for. Not necessarily the when killing these process. these predatory reptiles, whether they ambush predators or whether they are active hunters, go on the hunt, they're looking for clues. Initially, they will pick up an airborne clue, an airborne scent source. And this will set them in the right direction. Now, the active hunter will go on a wide zigzag pattern or a long zigzag pattern uh, following the airborne scent until he crosses the actual path where the scent now becomes imprinted on the ground. And the interspace or the frequency in the, in the zigzag pattern changes, it becomes shorter as the snake t um, crosses across this path and back again, very much like a blind man using his stick, tapping along the pavement to make sure that he's on the right track. The ambush predator, he's going to use that slow caterpillar style locomotion up until he intersects the scent source or, or the path, of, the actual path that the prey has taken. And then he's going to select an uh, ambush zone and um, he's going to curl up over there and he's just going to wait. Now most animals traveling in any given direction will leave a scent. And leaving the scent, they will um, use that scent as a return ticket. So when they go out, they will be going out in a direction. They'll be returning via the same direction. Should they run into trouble ahead, they can run back on a road already traveled. And be fairly sure, fairly sure, that there's nothing waiting for them. But a gaboon or a puff adder or any of the other ambush reptiles would be sitting there calmly watching both animals following that track and animals returning from that track. And so he'll sit there and whatever passes his nose, he'll grab and he'll hit. As an ambush predator, vision is critically important. Your field of vision should be such that you shouldn't need to turn your head to cover a wide area. And so when one looks at the head design of a gaboon, you'll notice that it has been perfectly designed for that ambush predatory role, where there's a wide range of vision. The shape of a gaboon's head is such that it allows for about 290 degrees at least if not more surround vision on the horizontal plane and there's a good 15 degrees 15 to 20 degrees right in front of the nose where the vision is shared between the left eye and the right eye which gives it excellent depth perception on the vertical plane a gaboon has 
about 180 degrees in each eye with a good 30 degree overlap which uh, should both eyes be turned to look in an upward position at their maximum they would have about a 30 degree shared vision which is also excellent for protection against aerial predators well guys and girls I hope you guys had fun with this clip I hope it's got your, your uh, thinking juices going feel free to agree or disagree with me remember that what I've shared with you guys now it's not out of a book, it's not off Google. This is my own observation that I've made over the years and uh, felt that I wanted to share it with you guys. If you feel different and you think different, please say so. Guys, have fun with our clips. Enjoy our channel and subscribe. Remember that it is free. You're not paying to subscribe. And... Um, share it around get your friends interested let's get our views up there's going to be a lot of exciting stuff on this channel and it's not just going to be rescues it's going to be all sorts so stay tuned for another great adventure coming up no better. <laughs>